All right, one of the best parts of honors, it's it's the reason it comes last there right before the MVP is this, the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the brand new class scheduled to get their gold jackets in August in Canton. The Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2023 unveiled last night. It is an honor to have a proud member of the 1979 class from Canton, Ohio, the Great Bear, the enforcer Dick Butkus joins us. Dick, it's great to have you on here. What do you think of the class last night? How you doing? We're doing uh, well. I'm having, I'm having trouble hearing you a little bit. Okay, uh, well, hopefully you can hear us. What did you think, Dick, of the Hall of Fame class that was announced last night? Well, I was kind of excited to see uh, DeMarcus Ware and Zach Thomas get in there, a couple linebackers along with Chuck Howley, and kind of disappointed that uh, Patrick Willis didn't get in. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm happy with those picks. Hey, Dick, how you doing? It's LaDainian Tomlinson. Good to see you. Um, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing great, sir. Now, obviously, you, uh, you went in in 79, which was the year I was born, and you've been going ever since. I, 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 I don't want to make you, you know, like, that's the respect that I have for you. Like, you are a true legend. <laughs> and every time we go back to the Hall of Fame, guys like myself look forward to seeing guys like you because you, you always share great wisdom. Uh, with us. With that being said, what are you looking forward to about about going back to the hall this this year? Well, it's uh, you know I haven't been there what a year, two years I believe, and uh, Chuck Holly's getting in. It's it, and like you say, it's always good to go back and see some of the guys. And even though you played against a lot of these people, you 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 know you're on a you're sort of on the same level now, and it's always fun to go back and talk to the guys. Yeah. Dick, uh, it's Maurice Jones, Drew here. And uh, the Chicago Bears struggled a little bit, but they had a, they have a promising quarterback. What have you seen from this offense and this team and where they need to go and get better? Well, I, well, I, I think, you know, Justin could be the answer. Uh, his rookie year, I, I don't think they coached him one iota. You know, when he comes, comes off the sideline when he was a rookie, you know, that he would sit down, take his helmet off, and put a hat on, a cap, and that was it. You see Aaron Rodgers come off the field or Tom Brady come off the field or Pat Mahomes go off the field. They got, a, you know, an iPad right there and a coach right there. So I think his rookie year was wasted. They didn't do a good job of teaching him anything. And so now they throw him in the fray, and, you know, I think they can improve their offensive line a little bit. And I told people, you know, this guy's going to get hurt eventually because he's got no one around him. So hopefully the Bears this year with some some shrewd trades or whatever picks get some people around him and surround him. And I think the Bears will be all right because they are embarrassing to watch, to tell you the truth right now. Well, Dick, have you seen enough from Justin Fields? The Bears have the number one overall pick. Are you sold on Fields or would you prefer them to be in the quarterback business at number one? Well, that's that's a good question, you know, and, 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 es and especially with the new group that's in there. None of these people, you know, that are coaching now with the Bears uh, had a choice of, of, of picking fields. So now do you, you know, shove him aside or not shove him aside, but go for a number one quarterback with your top pick? That I don't know. I, I, it's just, it, you know, it amazes me that the Bears have been bad for so long. And this is the franchise that started this business. You know, I remember talking to Hallis one year when he, after he retired, I says, Coach, you know, I went to the office and talked to him. And I said, Coach, who, who you, you know, who are you thinking about coaching? And he, and he said, well, when I know, I'll let you know, you know. And I said, well, you know, you know, really, I don't think you want to win here. And he jumped up, and I thought he was going to take a poke at me. I, I mean, I flinched. And he said, what did you say? And I said, I don't think you want to win here. Who do you think is in the Super Bowl? And he said, whoever they were, there were two expansion. I said, they're two expansion teams, Coach. You started this league 50 years ago. Are you kidding me? We should be winning every year. And then he sat back down. And I still believe it today. So number the franchise that started all this business. Come on, and we're and we're at this level right now where they are embarrassing to, to watch. Give me a break.
Let's bring back Dick Buckus now, the Hall of Famer, who's live with us. Dick, sorry for the audio difficulties. Ladanian was trying to ask you, do you think, you talked about the process on the sideline, that it's a generational thing? He said that... Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, could it, could it be, Dick, could it be a generational thing with a lot of these young guys who are coming out these days, you know, go to the sideline and maybe they don't interact with the coach like, like the previous generation and they put on a ball cap and watch the game. Do you think it's a generational thing? Well, well, Damien, then, then are we just talking that in his case, I mean, what about Aaron Rodgers and Brady and Mahomes? I mean, you go to the sidelines with them, and they got the they got a coach there talking to them and everything else. No, I I, don't, I just thought that that his rookie year was was a wasted year. They did not coach that kid. Oh, so and, I get it. And to go along with that, and to go along with that, their offensive line wasn't very good. Last year, obviously. So hopefully, with all these draft, you know, with all these draft choices they're going to get, maybe. Maybe we can get him some help. Yeah, Justin Fields certainly did look good, though, this past season here. Dick Buck is joining us uh, to talk about a Let's Talk About Obesity campaign. That's in partnership, Dick, with the NFL alumni. Tell us about that. Well, you know, that's a program that came out because, uh, you know, the 42 to 50 percent of ex-NFL players are obese. And, you know, it's... Obesity is really a disease, and it's not a character flaw. And so when I heard about it, I thought, you know, maybe I, it'll help me. If I lose some weight, maybe my, you know, neuropathy, it might help. So I lost about 47, and, uh, you know, it was tough. I was able to do it, though, but now I'm, uh, you know, it's tough to keep it off. Uh, and the main reason is that it leads to a lot of diseases, like di diabetes and, and uh, you know, heart disease, uh, high cholesterol, and it just really bugs me that the ads that are showing uh, on TV these days are, are obese people who are pushing diabetes medicines. Duh, come on. You know, and, and so I, I have a thing with, uh, called Takes Heart where uh, I have a facility at, uh, in Orange County where we scan the heart. And uh, so, you know, Obesity can lead to heart disease, so I'm all for it. I'm in, and uh, we got to get these NFL players to, you know, hey, it's nobody likes to talk about it, but you know, you've you've got to make an effort to do this. And like I say, it's a disease. It's not a character flaw, and there's people who can help, and that's what we're trying to do. And fighting obesity with the NFL alumni, Dick Buckus. It's a pleasure to have you on, sir. Uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your Super Bowl week there in Phoenix.